Hello everyone, and welcome to my Emmerdale News YouTube channel. Hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. Ever since Dawn and Billy Fletcher brought their infant son even home from the Emmerdale Hospital, Dawn has been extremely careful to try to keep even as far away from infections as possible. The little child has leukemia, and due to the weakness of his immune system, even mild infections such as colds could become life-threatening. Dawn has therefore made sure the family is aware of the need to limit their social interactions. Gabby and Thomas have moved out. Lucas and Clemmy, even siblings, are homeschooling, and the rest of the family is expected to follow social distancing rules and refrain from inviting strangers home. Billy has struggled to deal with Don pushing him away and believing that nothing he does is good enough in addition to Evan's condition. Billy was giving Evan his medication when the infant spat it back out, which meant he missed a dosage. This is when things got out of hand. Billy needed a release after that, so he went out and had a few drinks with Nate Robinson. The family bubble was eventually burst by Nate having to assist Billy in returning home and putting him to bed. Ken was the only one who was aware of this, and she filled in for Billy by informing Don that Billy was away that evening working on a project for her. Evan became feverish and had to be transported back to the hospital due to an infection. Don was curious as to who had entered the house infected. Once more, Kim took the responsibility, claiming that she had met for business in a hotel bar and must have contracted an infection there. Will's rejection of Rose Jackson's apparent selfishness upset the family, and Rose Jackson used Rose Jackson's support to try to destroy Kim alongside Ruby Fox Milligan. In upcoming episodes, Billy will realize he can no longer remain mute as Kim grows more and more alone in the family. He informs Don that after getting wasted with Nate, he was the one who introduced the sickness into the house, not Kim. What response will Dawn give this news? As she hinted at a potential reality TV gig, Emma Atkins, star of Emmerdale, said she doesn't think she can fulfill one of her mother's hopes. The actress first appeared in the popular ITV soap opera in 2000 and gained notoriety for her role as Charity Dingle. However, Emma's situation would have been very different if renowned actress Saran Jones had applied for the part as well. However, Emma was cast, and her opponent at the time went on to portray Coronation Street's Karen McDonald. While all was going on, Charity, along with local bad boy Kane and her uncle Shadrach, arrived in the hamlet for her cousin Butch's funeral. She immediately won over Emmerdale viewers. Emma did take a short break from her soap opera role back in 2004 to seek other possibilities. In addition, she starred in a number of other TV shows, such as Doctors, Casualty, Mayo, New Street Law, I'm With Stupid, and the BBC sitcom Dalziel and Pasco. With the exception of her 2015 maternity break, she has been a cast member of the serial opera since her comeback in 2008. Emma might be persuaded to take a second sabbatical, though, if she gets to participate in race across the world. The 49-year-old has stated that she would be willing to try something new and compete in the BBC reality show, which pits two-person teams against each other in a global race without credit cards, cell phones, or internet access. She stated to My Weekly, I lead a rather private life, and it suits me just fine. However, I'd never say never. Depending on the type of show, yes. Race across the world is something I adore. I believe I could excel at that. And I would enjoy the experience. Emma doesn't think she could handle the pressure of the BBC One Dance Show, despite her mother's desire for her daughter to compete for the Glitter Ball Trophy on Strictly Come Dancing, just like Emmerdale co-star Lisa Riley. My mother always says, why don't you do Strictly? She revealed to My Weekly. You would excel. I also adore Strictly, but I can't imagine the amount of pressure the competitors face. 
I'm not sure if I would want to take on a task that would put my mental stability to the test. Emma has acknowledged that she isn't ruling out taking another hiatus from reality TV in the future. I might take a year off at some point in the future to travel and work at other jobs, she stated, but for now, I'm here to stay. I don't feel the need to go do anything else as long as they are creating amazing material or my role, which I'd adore portraying. Football has once again forced the cancellation of Emmerdale from tomorrow's TV schedule. TV schedules aren't quite going back to normal just yet, even though Spain defeated England in the final on Sunday to win the men's Euro 2024 competition, which may be gone for another four years. With Tuesday's ITV soap episode pulled from the schedule, fans of Emmerdale will have to wait until Wednesday evening for a double bill and their next journey to the Yorkshire Dales. The reason for the schedule change is that ITV had to make way for live coverage of the most recent England women's football match, which is scheduled to air on ITV1 and ITVX. From 5.30 p.m. to 8.15 p.m., Sweden will play the Linuses in the UEFA Women's Euro 2025 qualifying match. Emmerdale's rescheduled episode for Tuesday comes after the show's executives hurriedly reworked an episode to honor England's remarkable performance at the European Championship. Characters Mora and Kane will respond to England's 2-1 loss to Spain this evening. The entire Emmerdale team would like to send our huge congratulations to the England football team on reaching the final of the UEFA European Championship, producer Laura Shaw said. We are excited to be supporting them in Monday night's Emmerdale episode, and we wish them the best of luck on Sunday. On Sunday night in Berlin, Spain defeated Gareth Southgate's team in the European Championship final for the second time in a row at the Olympia Stadium. Spain won 2-1, bringing further heartache to the nation's first-ever final held abroad. A magnificent equalizer by substitute Cole Palmer had given Southgate's team new energy after Nico Williams had rocked the seemingly solid foundation 69 seconds into the second half. However, the mighty excellent Spain continued to hold control, and four minutes before full-time, substitute Michael Oyarzabal scored what turned out to be the game-winning goal. With this defeat, England will continue to wait for their first major men's title since 1966. Playwright James Graham has announced that he will incorporate the disappointment of the Euro 2024 final into the revised script for his Dear England play, which is about Gareth Southgate. The popular play about the football manager and England's World Cup campaign in 2022 is set to become a BBC television drama with Joseph Fiennes returning to the lead role. Based on in-depth research and interviews, the storyline is a fictionalized narrative that depicts the challenges and victories faced by England's football teams. After England's final loss to Spain on Sunday, James was asked if he was going to alter the conclusion to better capture the intensity of the Euros. He said to BBC Breakfast, I am. Don't you think you have to? We are going to update it to add this final over the next several days and weeks as the audience would have been sitting there already aware of what goes on in Germany. In response to a question about Southgate's future as the head coach of the England men's national team, James stated, The last eight years of English football have been extraordinary, and I'm sure he will consider his future. You may recall what it was like to be an England supporter in 2016 when we had not been to the semifinals in 26 years. Fast forward to the present, and we have advanced to three of the last six finals. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.